that about 220 times. I'm going to need you to take in 220 children who have no food, no parents, no home, no school, no church. And when I say take them in, I mean I'm going to need you to feed them. I'm also going to need you to give them shelter. I'm going to need you to give them clothing. I'm going to need you to give them a place to live. And I need you to be their spiritual father. And you can't really say no, because I know you have a big heart, and they're going to keep coming. As a matter of fact, it's not really just 220 kids, because there's about 100 more that have homes nearby, but they don't have much of the rest of the stuff that you're going to be providing for these 220 kids. So I need you to kind of do what you're doing really for like 300 kids. Now here's the thing. I, I told you I need you to give them shelter, but I can't really help you with that. You're going to have to kind of figure it out. And so you're going to find that these kids have nowhere to live, and when you take them in, you're going to have to put them in whatever form of shelter you can come up with. And for a long time, that's going to be dirt floors, barely a roof, barely walls, and there's going to be a whole bunch of them sharing beds. Way more kids are going to be sleeping in one structure than probably should be, but that's going to be the only way it's going to work. Because if you want to give them more, shelter that I'm asking you to give them, I'm going to need you to do something else. I'm going to need you to get on an airplane every year or maybe more and travel the world to raise money to give these children shelter and food and an education and a spiritual life. Because unfortunately for you, I'm going to be asking you to do this in a part of the world where there really isn't much philanthropy. People don't have a lot of resources, or maybe it's not ingrained in the culture. So you're not going to be able to go down the street and ask people for money. I'm going to need you to get on a plane and go travel the world and try to find some people who you don't know who might give you some money to help you create the shelter and the food and the resources that I need you to give to these kids. And you're gonna to have to start one building at a time and shelter those who you can in a normal building until you can raise money for more buildings. And you're gonna get like 10 years into this and you're gonna have done some amazing things. You're gonna have raised some money so that you can give shelter in a proper dormitory to maybe half of these kids, maybe two thirds of them. But it's not enough, so you're going to have to keep going, keep traveling, keep raising money, hope that you will find some people along the way who will help you. Oh, and another thing, remember how I told you I need you to be their spiritual father? I'm going to need you to raise money to build them a church, because I need you to be their spiritual father, but I don't have a church to offer you. So in addition to the dormitories, I need you to, to build a church. Oh, and remember? There's these hundred kids who I said, they're not going to actually live with you, but I need you to teach them and bring them into your faith community. Well, I'm going to need you to buy a bus. <laughs> You're gonna, I don't know, figure it out. Find a used <laughs> bus, hope it works, and drive that bus around your community every day and go pick up these 80 or so children that you're going to bring to your place. And if the bus breaks down, sorry. It's on you, you gotta figure it out. Because I need you to get these kids there every day. You can't charge these kids tuition because their parents don't have the money to afford to pay the tuition. So if the bus breaks, you're gonna need to get back on that plane and go raise some money. Oh, now I need you to do all of this at a time in your life when you might wanna have your own family. Maybe you want to have a spouse and a couple children and you want to raise them. That's great. I think that's wonderful. But I still need you to get on that plane and go across the ocean and be gone for months at a time because you need to come up with enough money 
to do all these things that I've asked you to do. You're going to get 12 years into this process and you're going to have met some people along the way that will try to help you, but it's not going to be enough because kids are going to keep coming and I'm going to keep asking you to help them. Now, how many of us, how many of us would say, no problem, I can do that. I'm not speaking for you. I couldn't. I couldn't. I couldn't do a fraction. And all of what I just described, I don't think Father Constantinos would tell you, but that's what's been going on. When we hosted Father Constantinos, Shelley said to Father Joshua, I'm nervous. And he said, well, why are you nervous? And she says, well, how do you host a saint? That's what we've all been privileged to do. I don't know why it is, Father, that God introduced you to our community in 2019. I don't know any of us know why. But I will tell you that I am very proud of what we have done because I'm in awe of what you have done. And I know, friends, from being with Father Cosentinos, that the support that this parish provides is far and away the greatest support that he is receiving anywhere on God's road. Don't kid yourself to think that when he travels around the country, he goes to parishes that do what we do. 